Finally tired of doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results? Well, this show is going to help you change your life for the better. Strap on your seatbelt and navigate this roller coaster we call life with human potential expert and best selling author, Dr. Verna Price. Each week, Dr. Verna blesses you with her virtues to live your best life so you can be the best you that you can be. Happy New Year, and welcome back to Dr. Verna's Virtues. For those of you who are brand new, what a great way to start your new year and joining me on this podcast. Um, welcome. Listen in, subscribe, tell your neighbors, your friends, and keep on coming back. And for those of you who are my regulars, I hope that you had an amazing Christmas and holiday season. I hope that you enjoyed it, took a moment for yourself, drank your tea slow, and are ready for a brand new year. It is 2023, and I'm so excited about it. All right, so as we begin this year, what I want to do is just kind of give you a foundation, a great foundation in starting this year, okay, and giving you a strategy to get this year started and a way to create momentum in this year. All right, so, but before we start, let's go ahead and start with our affirmation. We're going to do the change one. It's the beginning of the year. A lot of people, a lot of you are thinking about what are you going to change? What are you going to make different this year? So let's go ahead and do the change one. And it says, this is my life and I get to change it when I want to how I want to, if I want to, because it was given to me. And that makes me very valuable, very important, very lovable, and extremely powerful. Just know that you have enough power in you right now to change whatever it is you want to change in your life. You can make that change happen today. All right. So in starting this year in 2023, there's a lot of different ways you can approach this thing. Here's how I'm approaching it. I'm approaching it from what's called an asset-based approach. Asset, A-S-S-E-T based approach. In this approach, what you're really going to be doing is taking a look at what worked and looking at your successes from 2022. Now, this is really critical. Why? Because as a rule, in general, most of us have been socialized to look at what doesn't work and what went wrong and what didn't happen. Where when I ask people in workshops, um, what do you not like about yourself? They are quick to answer. They will give me lists and lists of things. You know, I, I don't like this and I don't like that and I don't like this. I don't like my hair, and my nose, and my clothes, and my, my shape, my weight, all these different things. But if I ask the questions, what do you really like about yourself? They will, my typical audience will stop and they'll think. Some of them will start giggling and some of them will, you know, just start making these faces like, I, I don't know what I like about myself. Why? Because as a whole, in general, we are socialized to see the negative things in us. We are socialized to see the deficit in us. We are socialized to see what's wrong with us versus what is right with us. In this asset-based approach to your success, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look, take a look into 2022. And what I want you to do is I want you to literally take a journal, take a piece of paper and pencil, and I want you to literally write down everything that worked, everything that worked. It can be, it can be from the small thing, like you bought a new toaster and the toaster makes the best toast ever that worked. You made a good decision on that toaster to a big thing, till you finally found that house and you found the right realtor to get you the right house, to, to, to you started that business, you create your business plan, you stuck with it, you're now profiting, um, to you woke up a half hour early and so you got more done every day, to you stopped swearing all the time, you cleaned up your mouth, so now you feel better because the words going up to your brain are positive words. You stopped drinking. You got whatever it is, right? What I want you to do is to take a look at, at your successes. And I want you to list out all of the things you did well. You did right. You had success in. 
And this now, this success here, this whole list of things, whether it's small things or big things, and they all matter, just so you know, okay? Because the formula for success is success brings more success, brings more success, brings more success, which is why if you learned how to be successful, even if you had a terrible year in 2022, right? You you lost your house, you got bankrupt, you you know, you 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 lost your job. Let me tell you, if you know how to be successful, if you were successful in 2021 and 2020, you'll be successful again in 2023. Why? You know how to find success. There is a formula, and here's the formula. Success builds on success. So you have to figure out what do you do real well? What have you done real well? And then what you do is you take that whatever it is and you build on it. And so as you begin 2023, you're not starting from scratch with anything. You're simply building on a success. You started a new business relationship that started going really well. Guess what? You build on that. You follow it up. You begin to create some plans around it. You now extend into some other new collaborative relationships to continue to build your business. You build on. And in the process, here's what you what you're going to happen is as you list out your successes and as you begin to see all of the assets in your life. And I'm talking big and small, big and small then what will happen is that you will begin to create momentum right away in 2023. Even if you had a lull, sometimes toward the end of the year, we'll have a momentum lull, right? Uh, People aren't aren't booking speakers. People aren't, um, you know, there's not as much opportunity. Um, People aren't taking your, your calls or your meetings. There seems to be like a little lull in your business. It's okay. If you've been successful before, And you take a look at what you've been successful doing. What you do is you take those successes, you put it into 2023, you use it as your momentum to move forward into 2023, and it begins to build a new foundation for you of success into 2023. So what is your homework? Very, very simple. Very, very simple. Now, before you do your homework, I want you to resist this temptation because this is typically what we tend to do as human beings because we've been socialized this way is the moment we start reflecting on what happened, we tend to go right into the negative. And so you start thinking about what you lost, what didn't work, who hurt you, so forth. You know what? Here's the deal about the past. Here is the deal. 2022 is gone. And there is absolutely nothing, nothing. Do you know how, you know what nothing means? There's two words put together. It's no thing. There is no thing you can do about 2022. Done deal. Finished. It's done. You cannot change one word. You cannot change one situation. You can't go back. It's done now. It's over. There's only one thing, one process that you can use to make sure that you make 2022 work for you. And here is the process. It's going back into 2022, taking a realistic look at 2022 and asking yourself the question, what is it that worked? And how can I use what's worked and put it into 2023 to give me the momentum I need to get further faster? Now, some of you may say, but Dr. Verna, what about all that stuff I went through? What about all that pain? So what do you do with that? The very same thing. You take a realistic look at it. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. And you ask yourself the question, what is the lesson that I can learn from that painful situation? You lost that business account, why? What's the lesson? You lost that relationship, why? What's the lesson? You, 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 were, you were depressed for many months, why? What's the lesson? 
That is the only thing you can take out of 2022. It is the lesson. You take the lesson of failure. Why did you fail? Get the lesson. And you take the lesson out of success. Why did you succeed? Get the lesson. And then put those lessons into 2023 to give you the momentum that you need to move forward faster. Am I asking you to write goals? Of course. Of course. Why should you write goals? Because they work? Absolutely, because they work. When you write down goals, you are telling the universe that you have decided to create history. That's all a goal is. You write it down, you are creating your own history. The moment you write a goal down, what you are saying to the universe is you are, you're sending out, do you remember in the old days, they used to have like the town crier. It would be someone who would sit in the middle of the square, in the middle of downtown, and they would say, hear ye, hear ye, this is happening, that is happening. Same thing, the same thing with your goals. When you write your goals down, and you say, you know what? I was really good at this in 2022 and in 2023, I'm going to use it and I'm going to accomplish this and I'm going to accomplish this and this and this. When you write that down, you are being the town crier of your life. You're sending it out to the universe and you're saying, hear ye, hear you. I am going to accomplish this and this and this and this. And here is what the universe does for you. It hears you. And then it starts bringing to you what you need for you to have the momentum to get to that goal. So of course you should write goals. Why? They work. They always work. But this piece of getting your successes out of 2022, don't leave anything back there. Get it all out. You were successful, get it all out. Now put it into 2023 and keep going and be even more successful this year than you ever were before. All right, now for those of you who do not know, I published my fourth book, Power Lessons for Life, and I just squeaked it out of 2022. On December 23rd, it came out. If you do not have your copy, get your copy at drvernon.club, drvernon.club. And while you're there, by the way, check out becoming a member of my power club. And there's so much for you there. I look forward to seeing you there. Be sure to get your book and all my other resources as well. Go to my main website, drvernonprice.com, learn, grow. And I want to be there to work with you as you attain whatever success that you want to see in 2023. All right, let's go ahead and finish up with our affirmation. This is my life and I get to change it when I want to how I want to, if I want to, because it was given to me. And that makes me very valuable, very important, very lovable, and extremely powerful. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Get caught up on previous episodes of Dr. Verna's Virtues at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. You deserve more internet than what you get from just your cell phone. Get free high-speed internet at home, a $29.95 value, when you qualify for Internet Essentials Plus and the Affordable Connectivity Program. Enjoy more streaming, gaming, and video chatting on more devices for free. With unlimited data and a wireless gateway included at no extra cost. No fees, no taxes, and no annual contract. Connect to more of what you love for free with Xfinity and the Affordable Connectivity Program. Click, call, or visit a store to learn more. New year, more money, honey. Are you a minority or women-owned business in the Twin Cities and ready to take your business to the next level? Then I got the perfect opportunity for you. hy V's Opportunity Inclusive Business Summit is taking place on Thursday, February 9th at U.S. Bank Stadium's Polaris Room in a space donated by your Minnesota Vikings. This summit will be a day full of networking and professional development activities. The day also will include a pitch competition where local minority and women-owned businesses will showcase their products or services for the chance to win up to $30,000. You heard that right, $30,000. As a matter of fact, Hy-Vee is still taking submissions to be considered for the pitch competition, but time is running out. Go to HyVOpportunitySummit.com by Thursday, January 12th to submit your application for your chance to pitch your product or business and win up to $30,000. 
2023 is your year to jumpstart your small business. Register now for High V's Opportunity Inclusive Business Summit at HighVOpportunitySummit.com to attend the expo and network with other business professionals. And if you're ready to win some money for your business, submit your application for the pitch competition for a chance to win up to $30,000. Register now and get your spot at High V's Opportunity Inclusive Summit by Thursday, February 9th at U.S. Bank Stadium's Polaris Room. Space donated by your Minnesota Vikings.
Okay, Tina, I need to find out what happened to you after Christmas. You had all these amazing photos of you and your family on social <laughs> media. Y'all had the matching pajamas. Y'all was doing karaoke contests. Yeah. I was loving it. It was like I was there. And then I tried to call you the day after. I tried to call you two days after. I tried to call you three mm -hmm. days after, and girl, you had got ghosts. I was like, did somebody eat my friend at the Christmas party? What the girl, hell? Girl, I'm telling you, when you get to a certain age, you know what? I really wanted to, uh, you know, I have, you know, it's it's, it's, four, four, it's four of us siblings, and between us, we have 11 children. You know, both my parents are gone, and, and mm -hmm. I really, my kids always talk about our Creole roots and and just kind of, you know, how did we spend Christmas? And I, that was my focus. I said, I said, y'all come here to Dallas and I want to give y'all a Christmas like we used to do when my daddy was here. Mm. Cooking gumbo and mm. eating fricasse and some couvayon and some, you know, boudin. I mean, everything. Just, you know, just going all out and kind of showing them what, what we used to do. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, one, grocery. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I wanted to do it like we used to, where we all stayed in one house. Not people getting hotel rooms. Yeah, yeah. You so know, I them every... hotels back in the day. Girl, they got them old pissing mattresses and laid them out in the floor. Girl, we slept three, three, four to the bed, and some on the floor and sofas. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what I really, really wanted. And, I, and, 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 and that's just what we did. Everybody found a place to be, and that's what we did. And you know, but but the the flip side is, it was really, really tiring because. You know how you want things to just be so good. Yeah. And I just to the point where I was too pooped to pop. That's what my mama would say. I was too pooped to pop, girl. I couldn't even literally my I, I was just sitting on the sofa and I couldn't move. <laughs> and I fell asleep wherever I fell asleep. And that's and I tell you that it sucks some of the life out of me. <laughs> I saw you dancing and you was up and spinning around and moving. Cause I ain't yeah. seen you move like that since we was twenty years old. I said, baby, she must have got hold of something, some some magic pills or some and the baby yeah. Jack must have came over there, baby, because she is getting it. Girl, it you know, there's so many cute, cool games like cultural culture care. We play culture karaoke where they was just talking about all the old old songs and. We got to pick stuff from the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Uh -huh. And it was fun because everybody got to get up and we picked a team uh -huh. and we was groups. And, you know, we just we, you know, we it was fun. And then we play another one called Pit, which is kind of like a commodities game. And we enjoy that. And Uno and Spades. And we play. Uh -huh. And you know what? It was just a good old, good old time. Good but you old know, fashion time. Good old fashion time. And that's what I think was, you know, that was the highlight of it. And. I, I mean, I, I enjoyed it, but I definitely know that, you know, I, I, cause I really want my, you know, my siblings, they're getting older and it was like, you know, they, they receiving social security checks. So, you know, they old. <laughs> <laughs> you the baby. Yes. You the baby. I know. And so I'm like, um, y'all just sit down. Don't worry. They was like, I'm a hook. I'm a cook. My brother never, my brother act just like my dad. He just sat on that sofa and, and, and people, his kids and me, we were just handing them food. He just sat there. He, he had to move at all. And you know, that's what I kind of wanted, but you know, that, yeah. but it was fun. And what about your holiday? I know you was all the way in Houston, girl. Girl, let me girl, tell you something. That trick we over there. Outrun this winter storm. You know, we hadn't planned to leave for Houston from Minnesota um, we were only going to leave the Friday before Christmas, you know, uh -huh. cause we didn't need to be there until, you know, Christmas Eve. Yeah. And girl, we saw this storm coming and they were talking about how bad it was going to be. Uh -huh. And thankfully, you know, we've got the RV from camping world. So we don't have to try to change flights or anything. We just literally went got the RV threw the kids in there and got our ass out of town. <laughs> I'm so glad we did because girls start seeing horror stories about all the people who were stranded uh, mm -hmm. on the road as well as in, in the airports and yeah. could not get home for Christmas. It was devastating. You know what? And you know, I, I've seen some things like this, but see, don't you feel like it's just like gotten worse? I mean, when people, you know, in Buffalo, New York and all these different places, you stranded to the point where you over here got people, you know, live streaming 
screaming, watching you die. Watching that, you die because you because you they can't get to you. They can't get to you. Your family know where you at. You're six miles from home and you cannot get home. Girl, I don't know what I would have done. I kept thinking. I would have just got out and just started. But I mean, if you don't, you don't know if you're walking in a, over a ravine and you don't know. Or, or, or you can't. And that's the thing, you know, you and I both, I live and you have lived in climates where there's really bad snow, you know, and the one thing they tell you is stay put, you know, we'll get to you. But you know what, what do you do when they don't come? You know, do you get out and start walking? Girl? And I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be trying mm -hmm. to drive that RV in no snow because those things are huge. huge. And I don't want to be slipping and sliding on the road with my baby. Mm -hmm. So we left a couple of days early. We got down to Houston and girl, I, I had the same feeling as you. This is so funny. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have an old school <laughs> Christmas Eve party, you uh -huh. know, I wanted to, you know, like my grandmother and great grandmother used to have where they mm -hmm. would cook and um, have all the family members over and they would drink and play music and all that good stuff. But because I'm out of town, you know, I wasn't able to plan it like you did with the, all the personal stuff. So mm -hmm. I just say somebody, I'm like, y'all get that shit cooked and <laughs> drop it off. Uh, and, and Santa, y'all show up and, you know, so. And I just couldn't figure out why. I was like, Lord, why am I doing this? You know, because I, I felt like, you know, my a lot of my family members in Houston, they don't check on me. They don't call. They mm -hmm. don't make sure me and these kids are okay. When I do go to Houston, they don't come to see me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I have driven 22 hours. You want you don't want to drive 30 minutes across town to see me? You know, and, and so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, girl, honestly, when God said for me to do this in the prayer, I said, fuck them niggas, Jesus. That exact <laughs> shit came out of me. I said, fuck them niggas, Jesus. Ah! <laughs> because I'm telling you, it gets like that sometimes because you're kind of like, okay, I do all of this. But if if, if, if it's some big accolade, they going to want to be there. They want to oh, be yeah. the grand. They want to be at the awards show. They want to be at the Tonys and the Emmys. But they look, but they don't want to be through that process. Ain't nobody getting down in the dirt and doing the work. Don't mm -hmm. nobody want to memorize the script and the lines, but they want to get in on the stage when the lights come on. I, I was praying the other day, Lord, deliver me from people who want to be extra, but don't want to do extra. And yep. I was so afraid that if I asked them to do anything, that they wouldn't come. So the Lord just told me, do everything. Yeah. Get the food um get the drinks get everything don't ask them for anything just tell them to show up and shower them with love and so i asked my pastor joe palmore i asked him to come um to the event and i said i want you to pray for you know my family i said i'm gonna you know they got a little room at the at the little place where we had it at the rv park in the mm -hmm. little um you know rec room uh -huh. i said and it's kind of like off to the side it's like a little office space where the people come and print stuff i said it's glass so you can go in there and you know i'm gonna just let family members know that they can come in mm -hmm. and have prayer with you and he said okay so he was there an hour or so and he said you want to get started i was like yeah that's good they look it up and they've been drinking and they defenses <laughs> So now we can hit them with some Jesus. You can't hit them with the Jesus at the door. You know, you got to, yeah. you know. Yeah, you got to you gotta smooth them in there. Yeah, Let them, they, they don't even know. Let it hit them. Man. Yeah, they don't even know Jesus is coming. And so I just, I just, I didn't make a big announcement. I just went around to the different groups who were there. And I said, listen, my pastor's here. He's in this little room. If you want prayer, go in the, in the room and he'll pray for you and get you a little Christmas blessing. Maybe you get your Christmas miracle or something. And they said, oh, okay. And I didn't know if anybody would go in there. Girl, I didn't know all this stuff was going on. Girl, one of my aunt's house burned down. One of my aunt's best friends died. Girl, my cousin's wife was in the hospital while he was there with the kids and the grandkids because she diagnosed with MS. He got her on the FaceTime and, sh and everybody saying hi. Girl, one of my cousin's sons in jail for aggravated robbery. Girl, it's just, it was, girl, my aunt and lights done got cut off. Girl, my uncle's uh, son is in London and he on life support. Girl, it's just all this stuff was going on that I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, this is why I needed you to get them in the room mm -hmm. because I needed them to get connected connected to me because you yeah. know me girl i'm real superficial so i yeah. thought shit was all about me i was like oh yeah. lord you want me to show them how good i'm doing okay jesus i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna show oh, you yeah, a whole different plan oh, girl yeah girl the lord had something a completely different plan he wanted them in the room because he knew what they were facing mm -hmm. and he wanted that pastor in there to bless them and mm -hmm. girl the next day almost everybody who was at call and thanked me for yeah. having 
the pastor there. So the food and the room and the and, and the Santa and you know the drinks and all this stuff, girl, was just a way mm-hmm. to get them to Jesus. And I, I didn't even think about it at the time, but now that we think about it, girl, the first introduction yeah. we have to adult Jesus is at a party. How many times in the Bible is, yeah. is Jesus at a party? Party. Mm-hmm a wedding, a celebration, something somebody's doing, you know, and you know what, that's so, that's awesome that you did that because you know what, you always, I always have this conflict of, you know, if you're drinking, you can't be praising or you can't be dancing and you can't be praising or you can't be, you know, you can't, you know, get that, you know, right, right. You. but you know what, when you, when you think about your family, they were going through something. So we party because we going through some stuff. Exactly. And that's a moment for us to just step away from what our, whatever the reality is in our life. And we're going to party and have fun because we don't know what people are going through when they go back mm-hmm. home. And now, and you know, and being able to say, you know what? I'm going to release this right now, right oh, here. Yes. yes. I'm going to just give it up. I'm going to just let loose. And it was it was so amazing because they had the best of both worlds. It mm-hmm. was like they had an hour of drinking and family time and, you know, eating and, and getting together and laughing and talking. And, you know, a lot of times we do that. But but if we don't really release it to God, yeah. we go back with that same, you know, mm-hmm. we have a good time, but yeah. it's only temporary. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, what probably was even good for that, you know, with you is that now they can go and see, you know, because, you know, when people look at your life, they always see in the good things and all of the pleasantries and all of the wonderful things going on in your life. They don't know what's going on behind. So if you're going through some stuff, you don't want to be you you can't encourage somebody who who they look like their life is happy. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and and I'm I'm a kind of parallel that with these people who are living life and feeling like, you know, I got to commit suicide and do all this other stuff. They going through and having this facade because you showing everybody how wonderful things oh, are. Yeah. But you ain't showing people what's really going on what's in your really life. Going on. And so and they can't be, they can't support your testimony if you only giving them half. Girl, and, and, and get shame and, and don't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And, and even my aunt is so funny. You said that because she was like, I ain't going in there. I've been drinking. I said, you got a grandson in jail. Your lights just got cut off. And your your stepson is in a critical condition because he got Crohn's disease. If you don't get your drunk ass in there, yeah, and let this man. And that's when you let. That's, that's when you really can talk. You, you, you sometimes when you got a little liquor in you, you, you actually say way more than you probably should be saying. <laughs> Might as well be saying it to a pastor because right. you know, at least you'll clean it up a little bit. <laughs> Girl, and the thing is, is he sat there and watched everybody drink. You know, so it ain't like he said anything to anybody. He saw who we were doing. He saw y'all. He went in that room because he know y'all need to pray. And girl, I had no idea. And and this is the beautiful thing about Pastor Joe Palmore. And you know him. I love him. Girl, I love him so much too. Do you know the next day on Christmas Day, he went to visit my cousin in jail? Now, you know, you and I both know pastors ain't going to jail no more. They're going mm-hmm. to the bank. They're going to the galas. They're going to the boule. Mm-hmm. They're going to the uh, uh, empowerment workshop, the finance. Mm-hmm. You stuff. might get them at a family reunion and say no. the prayer over food, but yeah. then they be like, oh, no, 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 because, you know, you, you never know. Girl, but, mm-hmm. but this man went to the jail house and visited my cousin, and then the next day, Went to the hospital to visit my cousin who just got diagnosed with MS. And then the next day, called my aunt whose house burned down, called my friend, my cousin, my aunt who uh whose friend just passed away, and then called my aunt whose lights just got cut off. Mm-hmm. I was like, this man for real. You know, people ain't doing that no more. They not following up. Girl, mm-hmm. I, I you know, I love TDJ's girl. Lord knows I do. I tied to him faithfully for the first two years of my business. But girl, I have physically asked for a call back or yeah. you know, written letters, and I yeah. have not received a personal response. Mm-hmm. Not one. And this man yeah. going to the jailhouse. Yeah, and, and you know that 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 says a lot because you know, we always look at these big mega churches and these mm-hmm. big pastors, and you know what the intimacy is not there. And we came from smaller intimate yeah, environments where, you know, you can call a pastor and he'll show up at church and do things like that. But, you know, that, that you know, COVID is probably one reason, but they don't do that no more. So, yeah, that, you know, know, but Pastor Joe and Pastor Yolan, they were always, you know, just one in a million. I mean, they, they, they I mean, even to the point where you know, when they used to do the marriage, um, they used to do a marriage or like retreat. Well, mm-hmm. a premarital retreat. Yeah. And 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 when you know, because before you they would marry you. And they had a class, and I remember I was in the class, it was like 30 couples. 
Mm. And, and you know what? And when we talked to them later on, you know, you know, half the couples didn't make it. But, you know, the goal was, you know, he wanted to set a firm foundation for people. And, yeah. it, you know, but they, but it was like he checked on married people just to see, are you OK? How things for years and years and never forgot a person. Yeah, yeah, he he, he, they good, good people, and that's what I told them. It was a couple of my girlfriends who were there, and they said, "You know, I don't know this man, but if you saying that you trust him to pray, mm -hmm. I'm going in there because my son mm -hmm. is struggling." You mm -hmm. know, somebody else said, "I'm going in there. My marriage is in trouble," and I, and and girl, everybody who came out there, girl, they had a release. Mm -hmm. In their spirit, so it was a good time. It was yeah. a fun time, and then there was a release in the spirit, girl. It was beautiful, girl. And you know what? That may be something that we need to incorporate. You know what? This that prayer time because I I don't know if we do it enough. I mean, we celebrate, we say prayer over our food, but do we really do we really get into you know a word and people can really release some things because everybody is really kind of on this. It's only so much I'm gonna tell people, so they're not gonna tell us you know what's yeah. everything. But you know if they had a a, a platform when they can just go and let me talk to somebody who I don't know. And I'm going to tell them everything because they don't know me and I don't know them. And then they can walk away, get the prayer and, the, you know, and just get the, you know, the balance that they need and then kind of go on with their life. So I definitely, you know, see that as a, a good start. That could be, should be yeah. a tradition. And that's all like a new we, tradition. Yeah, I think that will be. And, you know, it was so amazing because I kept asking God, why do you want me to do this? Why am I doing this party? These niggas don't even like me. Mm -hmm. You know, what in the hell? Why am I spending all this mm -hmm. money catering and clowns and Santas and, you know, mobile bars and shit? They yeah. don't, you know, and, and, and the I means you have to mean, you have the means to bring them all together. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's what they were looking for, you know, a party. They were looking for a they party. They were looking for a party and found the Lord. They found the Lord. And some you of know, them didn't even know they was looking for it. And, and that's the thing. They didn't even know the Lord was there. I didn't mm -hmm. tell nobody that. I didn't say nothing. I said, Sam, you know, that would change the dynamic. Ooh, I ain't gonna drink if I'm gonna go. Gonna I'm gonna drink. go pray. Then I'm gonna go pray. Then I'm gonna drink. You know what? And that's that. That's probably best that you didn't say anything because the they can go in there and be like, hey, you know what? I'm flawed. But yeah, Shaletta this, this a this a church party. I ain't gonna. This must be her church friends and mm -hmm. stuff. And no Girl, drinking. Ain't gonna think I ain't gonna alcohol. Can I have one of them bottles? I'm just gonna go because I'm very mm -hmm. uncomfortable. You know, but God Girl. loves the unchurched. God loves the unchurched. He don't need th the people who feel like they're churched and have relationship. That ain't the ones that God wants to minister to. He needs to minister uh -huh. to the unchurched. Right, <laughs> and the church without walls. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I was just and like you said, it, I think it needs to be a family tradition and all the and like you said, people not telling their business girl by the end of the night everybody knew everybody business mm -hmm. because baby they got in there with pastor joe and came out telling me because mm -hmm. they felt a release they felt a breakthrough and you know I, I just pray that they stay like you were saying how pastor joe stays connected i pray that mm -hmm. they stay connected to him mm -hmm. um yeah. and that they continue to um have a relationship mm -hmm with them and and i really am girl i, I think that's what we're gonna do every year we're gonna have like mm -hmm. a little you know family get together mm -hmm. and at the rv park and have santa for the children and drinks and food and 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 yeah. have you never know how that's gonna turn that may become mm -hmm. that that may become the event to go to that people will be like you know what i'm going over there and i can go party i can come and be who i am and and i can get prayer and get some prayer hey girl. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? I think that in these times, things are going to have to change because I think the way that we've done it before, you know, it doesn't isn't always work, work. You know, it's not working now. You can't do that forever. You know, getting people to the Lord and getting people to understand, you know, you know, that that relationship that they need or just get the prayer that they need. People have kind of, you know, four, three years in the in, in, in the house watching, you know, church on TV. If you feel like it online, if, if you, you feel, feel like it, if you feel like, you know, people have disconnected from they the have. sense of what a, a structural church building is. And, you know, we got to find other means, you know, prayer yeah. groups. I, you know, I was even saying that the group that I'm in, you know, um, like, you know, the Jet Set and Divas, we probably need to have some better, more prayer time so we can, you know, can on one accord. We do it at church. Yeah, and and the, it'll it'll center and focus you too. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it'll it'll really shine a light on people that you have mm -hmm. in your circle and who you need to have around you, and it'll give you some clarity about some stuff. Because mm -hmm. girl, I can't wait till all them Negroes got out of that. I was like, mm -hmm. I want my time, but I want my time with everybody gone. When everybody I don't want nobody to be waiting. Because girl, by the, when people started seeing 
like a change in the room. Like mm -hmm. it was like, well, she came out. She was so, you know, and and so mm -hmm. and the girl before I knew it, they was lining up. See? So I was like, I don't want nobody waiting on me. I want to take all my time. So mm -hmm. let me let everybody leave. And then, you know, give a love offering at the end. And that's the thing. We ought to start trying to be a blessing to the people who bless us. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's one thing that I want to make sure to do in 2023 is mm -hmm. be a blessing, especially to the people who bless mm -hmm. me and my family. Girl, that man ain't have to do all that. That mm -hmm. man got a whole family and yeah. great children and he yeah. going to see my people on christmas day so girl you know i gotta put a little something in the mail or something yeah yeah and that you know and it, and you know because it is it's not about paying him to do what he do you know no. it's, 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 it is truly an offering because you know i've gone to many countries and you know what they just want to know that you you're you're, you're you know you're you're giving something because they've given you something back mm -hmm. not because not because you owe them or are you bartering or you buying something you know they want to know that whatever they've done to enhance your life that you've given what you feel you know is necessary to enhance their life and you know and and you know and sometimes they come in the form of offering and you know yeah. hey people it, it, again it, you know we see so much of the hand out you know remember the, the church tray used to go yeah. back 45 times they tell they empty your pocket give me the change in in your shoe girl <laughs> come on now that's because people didn't want to give, but you know, you give, you give, you know, you, you, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. And you sitting there, girl, talking about now they done took my light bill money. I'm going to have to call them later and get them to pay the light bill. I don't know why they keep messing with me. Yeah. So they yeah. don't even doing it, but that's, you know, that's, that's something to be said, but you know, girl, it is, I mean, but Christmas, you know, you got to kind of keep a piece of that tradition because I'm telling yeah. you, we, we losing it because, you know, yeah. it's becoming gift cards and call you and text you. Hey. I, I ain't never say had so many family members. I just text a happy uh, uh, a meme or a gift. Uh -huh. uh, that's it. I ain't talked to nobody. Look, or, oh, or like they'll just oh yeah i saw yeah they was doing this 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 and this and then you you say oh you talked to them oh no i seen it on facebook, facebook. yeah pick up the damn phone oh. and girl because that's what i work that's what our christmas and new year's is becoming we us watching our family members say, oh they all right like yep. and move on with your life <laughs> like and move. i like tell me you ain't count i like your post mm -hmm. that ain't got nothing to do with calling sean could have been you saw ass this ass right here you would have came <laughs> Girl, Girl, Sean could have buried me in the backyard and been posting on social media mm -hmm. with some old pictures. Their asses wouldn't even know. Yeah, you see that? You see that? <laughs> Girl, I, was, I see family members and cousins. They be like, "Girl, I'm over here partying. You right here in Dallas? I ain't seen you in in, in 10, 15 years. Oh, girl, I'm already back home. See, there you go. There you mm -hmm. go. There you go. Yeah. That's what, like I told Jesus. I don't want to do nothing for these. This Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna look at you on Facebook and keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> girl, I'm so glad you had a good Christmas. Glad yeah. you got revived back to life. You yes, look good. Okay. Can't wait to listen to the jet setting divas. Y'all got an amazing show coming up. Yes, so folks need to make sure after you check out this show, go and yes. check out Tina, Yvette, and Jeanette on the Jet Setting Divas podcast. Bye, girl. Bye. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> You deserve more internet than what you get from just your cell phone. Get free high-speed internet at home, a $29.95 value, when you qualify for Internet Essentials Plus and the Affordable Connectivity Program. Enjoy more streaming, gaming, and video chatting on more devices for free. With unlimited data and a wireless gateway included at no extra cost. No fees, no taxes, and no annual contract. Connect to more of what you love for free with Xfinity and the Affordable Connectivity Program. Click, call, or visit a store to learn more. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk Champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready, all right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, go to left, fake a mom. Mama, go, up, up, up. She did it. Again, you can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. 
New Year, more money, honey. Are you a minority or women-owned business in the Twin Cities and ready to take your business to the next level? Then I got the perfect opportunity for you. Hy-Vee's Opportunity Inclusive Business Summit is taking place on Thursday, February 9th at U.S. Bank Stadium's Polaris Room in a space donated by your Minnesota Vikings. This summit will be a day full of networking and professional development activities. The day also will include a pitch competition where local minority and women-owned businesses will showcase their products or services for the chance to win up to $30,000. You heard that right, $30,000. As a matter of fact, Hy-Vee is still taking submissions to be considered for the pitch competition, but time is running out. Go to HyVOpportunitySummit.com by Thursday, January 12th to submit your application for your chance to pitch your product or business and win up to $30,000. 2023 is your year to jumpstart your small business. Register now for High V's Opportunity Inclusive Business Summit at HyVOpportunitySummit.com to attend the expo and network with other business professionals. And if you're ready to win some money for your business, submit your application for the pitch competition for a chance to win up to $30,000. Register now and get your spot at Hy-Vee's Opportunity Inclusive Summit by Thursday, February 9th at U.S. Bank Stadium's Polaris Room. Space donated by your Minnesota Vikings.